Well, here we go again. We just arrived in Poland. Right last night, stopped over in a little hotel, but uh, at Nekielka Lake now. And uh, yeah, the gear's in a bit of a mess to be honest. We, I mean, we've travelled from Croatia yeah, up to Lake Bled and uh, onto here, so it's all a bit messy in the back there. But it'll all get sorted. Bivy ready to go up. Got the Titan this time. And here's the lake. We're in swim eight. Don't know the lake at all actually. But um been told that swim eight is quite a nice one, looks good. There's boys out there in the middle marking our sort of boundaries. We can go out as far as the, the boys, and there's one left, one right. And uh yeah, looks nice. Nice sort of sandy bank there, and uh we can use boats, so uh yeah, it looks a little bit shallow for getting the boat out, but I'm sure we'll manage. But, um, yeah, it's nice to be here. You know, I've had a hard week on Lake Bled, which was absolutely fantastic, got to say. But the fishing was really hard. Just day fishing only, travelling light, up early, staying late. So it's going to be lovely to just get the bivvy up in the shade there, chill out and relax. Here we go. Right, Rod's going out for the first time. Slip D rigs, snowman's. Whew. Standard sort of uh, rig really, but uh, if it needs to be changed as time goes on, we'll see. But it normally works. Right, I've had a look at it. As you can see there, they're the boundary boys. And everyone seems to be coming out to the boundary. Which is pretty standard on Polish waters actually. People seem to go as far as they can, but I was speaking to a couple of guys who were just leaving and they said the guy in this swim was catching them near the boundary in a couple of deeper channels and the thing is the swim on the other side here it's a bit difficult with the sun um, but there's a great big island sticking out of the water in between the boundary and the you know that other swim on the other bank so that could be the reason it's empty it's a bit difficult to get rods out here it's all actually very shallow out here That's all it is, not very deep at all. 3.5, 3.7, so below five foot don't seem very deep. It's deeper, you can see it dropping off on the sounder there. Four, four and a half, four, six, four, seven, four, eight, nine. Yeah, five foot. Yeah, it's pretty shallow all the way along here. And then, yeah, it just starts dropping here, which looks good, very near the boundary. But that's where it looks good. 5.8, nice and deep. 
See what I can do is just come back to where it starts coming up so I know that I can just fish over the back of the marker. Yeah, that's where it comes up, so that's where I'm going to drop the marker. Right there. <laughs> Perfect, that is. Look at that. Don't mind fishing close to these poles because they do just flip over when the line goes round it. Sometimes it actually stops the fish kiting too much. It actually holds them in position for a little bit longer. Well, that's the first night done. All quiet for me actually. Um, there were fish showing out at the back of the areas, but uh, no action. It's, it hasn't been fishing too well. It's really high pressure at the moment. Uh, warm days, cold nights. It was a really cold night. But it was a couple of fish out. Well, three in fact. There was two on the other side. Guy had two, uh, and the guys further up here had a 20 kilo. So shows they're catchable. Um, pretty confident with the spots. Sounds like they prefer smaller baits here, um, which is, is not unexpected actually on high pressure waters. They tend to like smaller and smaller baits, so uh, that's what I'm going to go in with. Either I'm going to try pop ups and uh, little snowmans, little 12 mil snowmans, um, and see how that goes. What I'm also going to try and do, because they're not feeding particularly strongly, is um, try and build up a lot of attraction. I've made up some seed with the uh, sort of pigeon seed that smells of aniseed but I've also got a bottle of aniseed oil that I've been putting in the, the seed to really boost the flavour. Apart from that I've got my boilies and, and pellet here and 12mm scopet squid, 12s and 15s and some key cray pellet, I've got scopet squid pellet as well uh, but that's key cray in here and to try and boost them up as much as possible I've just got the Scopit Squid Syrup and I'm putting that in now. I'm actually going to put baits out this evening, so I'm putting it in now, giving it plenty of chance to soak in, give that a good mix up, let it soak in all day, because otherwise a lot of it just washes off as soon as it drops in the water. But if you let it soak in all day, it soaks in to the pellets especially, but into the boilies as well, so that they actually get down up at the bottom and then it starts leaking out all that attractiveness and it's, oh, and it, it smells lovely and it, it's pretty good as well. It's a, it's a little trick that I was using on uh, Shumba in Croatia, which of course only a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, yeah, it worked well there, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work here as well. But little amounts, I don't think they want loads of bait here, so it's going to be little amounts of little baits, but um, all that attraction packed in as much as possible try and get them on the spots.
first fish and uh, it's a right cracker and all. Nothing the first night. It was quiet and it was cold. Um, cold night last night but ripped off out, out the blue. And yeah, a real stonker. 51 pound, four ounce. Um, yeah, only me, my second ever Polish 50, but let's get one first fish out late. That's a bit of a result. <clears throat> Absolute cracker. It reminds me a bit of the old Shantycock fish. Like a lump of a carp. God, I mean, it took off on the run. And uh, I thought it was going to hit the other side of the lake. It just never stopped taking line. Proper good scrap. But an absolute beaut. What a way to get off the mark. Yeah, I heard a, a little bit about Nekielka Lake. Didn't know much about it. But I knew there was some good fish in here. Plenty of uh, 20 kilo fish. And there we go. Started off with one straight away. And uh, I don't get much better looking than that. Phew. <laughs> what a result, eh? Happy days. <laughs> Oh, what a night. It was one of them nights last night. The fish came back anyway. They had been further up the lake last day or two. And uh, they came back, so there was a bit of action. But well, the first one, the left-hand rod went off. And that's been going off the last few days with funny sort of takes. And I guess there was a line trailer out there somewhere, sort of stuck in the area. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, there was. So I don't know if you can see all this, but... Um, a massive line rig, boily still on there, so it hasn't been out there that long. Um, but the fish, poor old fish, have been stuck in it for a couple of days. So anyway, got that all out and uh, got the rod back out. Then the right hand one went off. Uh, fish kited along, went into the second rod, got caught up on that. The fish came off, which often happens when they get caught up in another line. But the line on the second rod was in a right old mess. Real big sort of bird's nest. So uh, basically, I've only got one rod fishing now. The other one, um, the rig's still out there, but I'm trying to sort out this big bird's nest of line. This is all about two o'clock in the morning. As I'm doing that, the last rod's gone off. So I've had to throw the bird's nest out of the way. Um, eventually I had to go out in the boat because it started kiting around towards Zibby's rods. And uh, so I got out in the boat and the one rig that was attached to the bird's nest that was still out in the lake, the fish has gone under that and I could see the rig coming up and eventually it got caught round the tip ring. So I had to put the rod down in the boat, grab the line and hope I was biting through the right one, which I did. So I bit the rig off, threw that in the boat and played the fish and uh, yeah, finally got it. So I'll show you that in a minute. Not, not a monster, 15 kilos, 32 pound. But um, yeah, that was it. That was so all the rods were were out of action. Um, got them all. It took about an hour to untangle the bird's nest, get them all back out, uh, and then one went off again and it fell off. <laughs> so it was one of those nights. Thank God I landed that fish because it, otherwise it would have been an absolute nightmare. But yeah, despite all that, you know those nights happen now and then. But we got a fish out of it all. So. It wasn't too bad in the end. Yeah, so this was the, the one shining light, the one little bonus of uh, last night's carnage. <laughs> At least we got one. Blimey, it's... Um, well, anything could have happened last night. We could have had three fish. Could have had none, so... Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to co complain too much because at least we did get one. Not huge. 
£32. But um, yeah, gave a good count myself, good scrap. And uh, whew, I was just pleased to see it after all that went before it. Yeah, lovely Polish carp. Nekielka carp. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good on Nekialka. You're allowed to do plenty of stuff using boats, for one thing. Um, you're allowed to bring your own boats and use them, which is a, it's a big help because, you know, I need to get out there and find spots and whatever, you know, it's all up and down. It's like an egg, upside down egg box out there. So it's important to find spots and find your areas. The problem is, it's quite a shallow lake and at the moment the water's down about 18 inches as well so normally this would be all underwater here so it's even more shallow than usual it's um the spots I'm, i've had the action from is about five foot but they're the deeper channels a lot of it out there is like between three and four foot so you imagine it's, it's like it's only that deep so going over in something like this it's going to spook the living daylights out of them i should think even though they're seeing quite a few boats um if you're going in and out too often in the boat, I, I just think it's going to spook fish out. So, uh, although I've sorted out my spots first day with this, try to keep it down to a minimum uh, and actually use the bait boat for getting. I mean, I'm fishing at about 150 meters the far rods, you know, and casting isn't really an option because I'm using sort of pretty heavy gear, 20 pound line and all that. So, I'm restricted in that way. So got the RT4 uh, and yeah I've just taped little uh, markers little line markers and all I'm doing is once I've found a spot that I'm happy to fish I'm putting a little bit of tape just beyond the tip ring to actually get the distance correct uh, and then just lining up with something on the horizon you know either a tree there's a couple of lampposts at night lighting up so I'm lining up with those and literally once I get the distance, once the little thing clonks through the rings and gets to the tip ring, I know I'm on the spot. So, but I'm doing that with the bait boat. Um, and it, in actual fact, it's quite easy and uh, it certainly spooks the fish a lot less. And yeah, that's the name of the game in there. There's a few boats being used around the lake, different places. And uh, I think the more you can keep disturbance down, the more chance you've got really. So uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. But, um, you know these things yeah they, they're more accepted these days and it used to be frowned upon even not I used to frown upon them years ago wouldn't use one uh, but I've come to realize they're actually a really good bit of equipment and uh, right place right time can't beat them so uh, yeah that's it plenty of gear and it's all getting used but um, yeah for getting them out now it's, it's gonna be the bait boat Yeah, I feel a little bit here and there at the moment. Uh, and the Polish people, they're so friendly and kind. We got invited uh, just over in the clubhouse for a, a little barbecue and uh, a drink. Uh, you know, Polish being Polish, there was lots of drinks and <laughs> not so much food. So, uh, but it was good. It was good fun. And they are lovely people. But yeah, suffering a little bit now, but Still managed to catch one anyway. Not big and uh, 20, 26 pound, but um, lovely fish. Yeah, lovely, lovely colours. <laughs> it's not been easy. Fishing hasn't been easy, but. <laughs> we have managed to get the odd one anyway.
There we go. One very angry Polish carp. There's an old saying I learnt off a guy at Shanticock nearly 30 years ago in the early 90s and he said to me mackerel sky not 24 hours dry basically what he means when you see those stripy clouds looking a bit like mackerel pattern it means there's a, a front going to move in in the next 24 hours bringing rain and I'll tell you what nearly every single time it's right so we've had sunshine all week we'll see shall we Last morning and uh, still a bit early but we're getting all packed up now. One more fish, it's been uh, a little bit slower, um, I thought we might get more last night but just pleased to get one. <clears throat> As predicted the, the weather's taken a turn for the worst and uh, as you can probably see behind it's very very gloomy and we're due to have lots of rain. Um, so it's, it's good to get packed up and the temperature is going to halve, it's going to be basically We've had 20s, it's going to be 11 degrees tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it's not a bad time to be going. I mean, for the most part, the wind's been hacking up the other way. And yeah, I wasn't surprised to, to hear yesterday that um, a couple of big fish come from up the other end, a 25 kilo and a, a 26 and a half kilo. So yeah, 55, 58. And uh, that's been the story really, the wind's been hacking up the other end and most of the fish have been up there. But we've managed to nick a few, um, sort of one a night really. And this ain't a big one, 24 pound, but um, you know, it's nice to end with a fish. You know, literally this is the last thing to do, just got to get the rods in and uh, we'll be on our way back to England. Um, but it is, I mean, it's been lovely here, you know, it's a fantastic lake, Necky Elka Lake. It was our first time here, but uh, we'll be back because it is lovely and there's loads of good fish in here. Um, yeah, you just need to be on them, of course. But, um, you know, caught that 50 at the start. That made the trip, really. Anything after that was a bonus. And uh, it's always nice to get one, like I say, on the last morning, just before leaving. Best way to finish up in it with a fish. So there we go. Happy days. Back home now to England. So it was a bit of a wet and gloomy end to what had been a great week. For the most part we'd had glorious weather, warm sunny days, chilly nights but nice sunny days to set out in. Fishing hadn't been too easy but we've seen a little glimpse of what the lake can offer and there's plenty of good fish in there, stacks of good fish in fact, lots over 20 kilos. There's a very friendly welcome from the owners and there's some decent facilities on site, some nice showers, charging points that are accessible for everyone and there's always a warm friendly welcome. In fact, carp anglers from any country are welcome there. And uh, we'll certainly be back in the future. We've seen a little bit of what Neki Elka had to offer, and we liked it. So we'll be back for more in the future. See you next time. <laughs>